Hello everyone, I'm Shannon Slatton in Osseo. Here's a look at today's top stories. In an effort to better understand how COVID-19 has spread in Minnesota, the State Department of Health is going door to door this month to conduct a survey and perform free diagnostic and antibody testing in communities across the state, including five of the Northwest suburbs. There are many people who may not have had symptoms or may have had very mild symptoms and they may not have been tested. And so this will provide some insight regarding how many people may have had this infection. State epidemiologist Dr. Ruth Linfield joined us via Zoom this afternoon. She said the Department of Health will approach nearly 1,300 households spread throughout six different regions of Minnesota. New Hope, Plymouth, Crystal, Robbinsdale, and Maple Grove are among the cities where randomly selected households will have state health officials knock on their doors. At this point in time, I'm not sure how many people will agree to participate. We hope a lot because the more that participate, I think the more we will learn about the impact of COVID-19 in Minnesota. Um, but as soon as we finish the study and we're able to look at our numbers, we'll certainly share it with everyone. This is the first time a survey of its kind has been done in Minnesota. The survey began on September 14th and runs through September 30th. Department of Health officials say it will take roughly two months to analyze the data and put together the results. Delane Cleveland, CCX News. Even now with school starting, the real estate market is still staying very, very strong. And we also usually see an election slowdown too because of the uncertainty and I have not seen that yet. Even with a pandemic and an uncertain economy, home buyers remain in strong supply. There's just one problem. Well, we do have buyers, we have plenty of buyers, but we don't have any houses for the buyers. Realtor Michael Doyle says there are multiple factors at play for the lack of homes on the market. For starters, people are staying in their homes longer. It used to be people moved every seven years. We're just not seeing that anymore. Then there's less home construction, caused in part by supply chain issues and soaring lumber prices. Lumber prices have gone up five times since June. It's led to pent-up demand fueled by one major factor in the buyer's favor. Interest rates are at an all-time low. So that is great for the real estate market. And that is, I think, the reason why the first-time home buyers want to get into a home is they know these low interest rates aren't going to last forever. And there's another thing Doyle is seeing. Fewer people are working in places like this. Instead of the office, people are choosing and needing to work from home, and that has buyers looking farther and farther out. Places like Maple Plain, Waverly, Annandale, and Buffalo are no longer considered too far away. Uh, I'm seeing where you can buy a new construction house out a little bit further, probably for $100,000 less than an existing home in Maple Grove of the similar size. The tight market also has led to multiple bids that often end up above asking price. I've had clients that have been looking all spring, summer, now going into the fall that haven't been able to find a house just because of the lack of inventory. Put all these factors together and it adds up to one unusual fall selling season. I've been doing real estate for 22 years now and I've never seen this strong of a fall market. You know, as long as the demand's there, we're gonna keep working and uh, I think, you know, we September and possibly October and be great months for real estate. Corey Bork, CCX News. The Twin Cities housing market is hot. Realtors say inventory and interest rates are low and homes that are priced where they should be are selling fast. As a result, it's pretty exciting for us at Home Furniture. Furniture stores are reaping the benefits. Uh, when you go buy a new house or a new apartment, uh, you got to go get new furniture. Uh, it's just kind of what you do. New, new comes new. Kyle Johansson is executive director of merchandising for Home Furniture. And he says the hot housing market is leading to in increased sales across all departments, especially when it comes to living and dining room furniture. Furniture sales have always been highly correlated with uh, home sales. 
but in the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic. Okay, what, what can we do here? Linda Carlson of Coon Rapids discovered that buying furniture right now is going to require some patience. One of the things that we purchased for mom was a bed and it took so much longer than they anticipated. I think, as a matter of fact, it was like six or eight weeks instead of the normal two or four. It's a common story at a lot of furniture stores. Typically, we have a 90% in stock rate, and that's 90% of everything you see here. When COVID hit, many stores had to close because they weren't deemed essential. But customers with time and extra income on their hands made online purchases and created a backlog. And so demand went way up while supply was going down. And obviously basic economics tell you that's gonna be cause a big problem over time. On top of that, Johansson says supply chains are backed up and many factories are operating below capacity to help maintain social distancing guidelines. As a result, if you order furniture now, you'll likely have to wait for it. You know, you should plan on a, you know, a 30 day delay still on your inventory. Um, maybe even 45 days uh, further than what you normally would experience, uh, especially for those custom orders that have to go through the factory one by one. The best advice is to start shopping for furniture about a month before you'll need it. Otherwise, you may end up with a new home and an empty living room. You know, welcome to a new marketplace. Delane Cleveland, CCX News. Find more local news stories at ccxmedia.org and follow us on social media. Local high school football and volleyball teams have their seasons pushed back to the spring due to COVID-19, but were allowed some practice time this fall. As Jay Wilcox reports, the practice sessions took on a new tone when word came out that a fall season may happen after all. In what normally would have been the middle of the season, it's a return to the practice field for the Armstrong football team. And this week came word that the Minnesota State High School League is revisiting the decision to move football to spring and there may be a shortened fall season after all. We're all happy that we're gonna have a season. We don't wanna really wait, cause we're all ready to go and get to going, but now we're just all getting to work and praying that we can get a season. I was also not expecting it, so it's a little unexpected, but I'm really glad that we can possibly be back out there and you know, it'll just be really fun this year, I feel like. You know, I don't know what the right answer is. You know, I've, we've erred on the side of safety. Again, this summer we've got kids out every day. We had 120 kids, but we split it up into three groups of 40 and had 10 kids in a pod with one coach. And we tried to treat it as a, you know, just helping the kids get out of the house, bring a little joy. So I don't know what the right or wrong answer is. I know, you know, we'll be ready if we have to go. And uh, yeah, tough one for me to answer. I'm, I'm personally, to be honest with you, I'm fine either way. That decision is expected to come Monday. These practice sessions were already planned under guidelines issued by the State High School League in August. And they're a welcome sight for players who have faced a strange year, including distance learning. Because we go from like being at home with like just us by ourselves in a room with a computer screen to coming out here with all of our teammates just trying to have fun, make our day a little better. Armstrong had one of its best seasons ever last fall, going undefeated in the regular season before losing a heartbreaker to Elk River in the Section 6-5A title game. Most of the key contributors on that team graduated, so it will be a young Falcon squad. Uh, for me, this is like a really different group because I play with like a lot of seniors. But I'll say we, ha we still have a really good group. We have a chance to go real far this year still. Uh, I think we lost 18 of our 22 starters, so we're going to be young either way. right? If we, if we start next week, we're going to be really young. And if we start in March, we're going to be really young. So Armstrong and other local teams may soon shift into high gear to practice for a fall season. Or, if not, work towards March. Jay Wilcox, CCX Sports. Thanks, Jay. We are already halfway through the regular season for fall sports 2020. High school swimming is one of the sports that's taken on a different look this season. No fans allowed for high school swimming this fall. Breck hosted Blake Tuesday in an IMAC conference meet. In the 200-yard medley relay, the Breck team of Caitlin Phelps, Abby Colgan, Megan Englert and anchor Shania Newton touch home first in the time of 1 minute 57.16 seconds. 200-yard individual medley. It's Englert of Breck winning. 
The sophomore finishes with a time of 2 minutes 18.24 seconds just ahead of Hannah Sweet and Blake. 53 and a great race to the finish. Bottom of your screen is Molly Seidel of Blake. She gets home first in 26.67 seconds, six one hundredths of a second ahead of Newton. Will Milchman of Breck is third. 100 freestyle event, Carly Bixby of Blake swims to her second win of the evening. The freshman places first in 54.24 seconds. Bixby earlier won the 200-yard free. Breck, though, would stay ahead in team points throughout the meet. 500-yard freestyle, and Maddie McDermott swims to a win in 5 minutes, 54.63 seconds, winning the race by 14 seconds. Kaylin Phelps of Breck is the school record holder in the backstroke. In this meet, she sets a new pool record in 58.29 seconds. She was state class A runner-up in the backstroke last year. The Mustangs score a win in the 100-yard breaststroke too. Abby Colgan wins in one minute, 11.99 seconds. Annika Wilson of Breck is second. Breck goes on to win the conference meet over rival Blake, 58-44. In Golden Valley, John Jacobson, CCX Sports. For more local news and sports stories from the northwest suburbs, please visit our website at ccxmedia.org. That's all for sports. I'm John Jacobson. Find more prep sports games and highlights at ccxmedia.org and follow us on social media.